Hi, I'm Cheryl. I have another basically black and white card for you today. And like on my first one, the one I'm going to demo for you, I'm going to add a little color to it. But here's my my um, sample card. I've got a happy birthday wishes it's on a little banner. It's popped up. And then a little sentiment on the inside of the card also. So let's get started. And this is what we're going to need. We need a piece of basic black cardstock. This is eight and a half by five and a half, and it's scored and folded four and a quarter. That will be our card base. A piece of polka dotted designer series paper, and this is from the Neutrals designer series paper um, by Stampin' Up. And this is five and a quarter by four. And then we need just little pieces to cut our little our little banner from. The basic black you'll need about uh, two and a quarter by one and a half. Um, probably you won't have exactly this um, tag or banner, whatever you want to call it. So use what you have and adjust your paper size accordingly. If you don't have anything like that. If you're just starting out, you can always make yourself a little, I'll, I'll demonstrate real quick here. Um, make yourself a little banner and let's see, we'll cut it about the same size and just in the middle of the paper cut in about a quarter of an inch and then from the corner cut to the tip of that from the corner to the tip. I didn't get this very well lined up. And you can do that on both sides. You do that on one side. doesn't matter. And you just make your black piece a little bit bigger. So it, it gives it a nice little border around the outside. So you can get around fancy tags. I got this set. I bought at Michael's this um, from Stampendous puts this out. I just I just I bought it basically for these little ovals and these little tags, but it also has a thing to make a pop-up section in your card and then it has all kinds of crazy um, edge dies in it also. So and then it gives instructions on the back how to do the little pop-up thing. So maybe maybe I'll have to do a pop-up card one of these days where I have something on the inside that pops up at you. But for now, I'm using the tags. So I've got my black one cut and my white one cut. And those were the two middle-sized dies from that set. And we need a piece of Whisper White for the inside. And this is three and a quarter by five. And we're going to add some rich Razzleberry to this card. On my sample card, I use some silver foil paper. We're going to replace that with rich Razzleberry on, on our demo card. And then we need a piece of Whisper White that's two and three quarters by three and a quarter. And a piece of black to border that. And that piece is three by three and a half. I use the Fabulous Floral or Fabulous Flora um, stamp set, which is a hostess gift. Um, and this flower right here, but if you have a flower that's similar, then use that one. And from Advent Garden, I'm using the Happy Birthday Wishes. And of course, you can put any sentiment you want on the card. It's your card. I can't see it from my house. You do what you want on your card.
It's your card. Do it your way. Okay. The inks I'm going to use are Always Artichoke and Rich Razzleberry and Delightful Dijon. So we're going to be coloring in our flower. And then I have two of my um, blender pens from Stampin' Up. I have Stampin' Dimensionals. Our little, our little tag is going to be popped up. And I have my snail adhesive. So let's get going. Make this card. I'm going to start out by stamping my flower. Oh, and Memento Black Ink. I almost forgot about it. I had sitting face down, which is actually how you should store this type of a stamp pad that keeps your ink on the surface of the pad and ready to go for you. I think actually it's about time I re-inked mine. I'm going to have to do that very soon because I notice I'm not getting real good coverage on my on my stamps a lot of times. So The Stampin' Up! pads, you don't have to do that because it automatically flips it over for you and you just store your pad just right side up. So let's see, let's get that centered and it's going to come off the bottom of the paper a little bit. And press that down, let that ink transfer. And there we go. Nice impression. And I need to wipe up my my mat here. This is a silicone mat that I work on. And it's just wonderful. It's a baker's mat. It's not for um, doing crafts. But it's a nice big size mat. I just love it. Okay. Oh, and while we're we're doing the stamping, let's let's stamp this little tag on my dem on my sample card. I did it the easy way. I stamped my sentiment first, and then I lined up my die when I cut it out with the sentiment that I stamped. So wish me luck in getting this lined up and centered. Because this is this is the hard way of doing it. There we go. That looks good. I didn't do too bad. Okay. So done with the memento ink. But let's color in our flower. I'm not sure what kind of flower this is. It looks very familiar to me and I just can't put my mind on what kind of flower it is. Okay, on the Stampin' Up! pads, let me start. You just squeeze them. Give them a little squeeze in the center. And that makes a nice little um, puddle of paint here. You can use the lid then as your... Well, actually it's the base as as a um, as a palette to paint from. So I'm going to take my my stampin or my um, blender pen and I'm just going to I'm going to pull just a little bit out from here. I don't want it real dark. So you see what I'm doing? You see how I'm pulling this out and I'm making making a lighter puddle. And you'll the fluids from your um, blender pen will mix with your with your ink, and that will that will give you a lighter color. Then I start from the center here, doing the little um, I don't know what that is in the center stamen, I guess, and I'm pulling that out to the edge, and that's it for the the delightful Dijon, and I just scribble off. Let me bring the paper in here and I'll show you. I'm just scribbling this off until no color is coming off of my pen anymore. Now that's nice and clean for the next time I'm going to use it. Alright. So that's all for the delightful Dijon. So we'll go on to the Rich Razzleberry. This is a gorgeous color. Let me give that a squeeze because I don't know. I don't know how much Razzleberry color. Oh, I had plenty in there. 
but here we go. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to make the edges of the flower darker than the center. So I'm going to start on the outside edges and I'll pull the color in. So let me pick up some some of the rich razzleberry and I'll just go around the outside edge just like so and then I'll just flick it in okay can you see that I don't know I had my camera lower than normal but so you see where we're going with this and we'll just keep pulling that towards the center and it will go from dark to light okay very simple you don't want to work this paper too much because it is just cardstock so if you do it'll start to like pill up on you We'll do that on all of our flower petals and pick up a, just a little color. Now I'm not going right into, you see I'm not even touching this real dark pool here. Well, maybe just a little on the edge. But I've got a lot of this little bit, little bit lighter color here. I just use flicking motions in the directions of the lines that are on the petal. And I'm going to go all back around. I'm going to add just a little more darker color, just a little on the on the very edges of my flower because this will dry a little bit lighter. And I want a pretty good, you know, a pretty good representation of that rich razzleberry on my, the edges of my flower. And just a little on that one. Oh, okay, I think that's good for that flower. Now we have a couple of little, little buds here. So I want to, I want them pretty dark. There's a little bundle of three there. And I have one more there. That needs a, that one needs a little more color. Okay. So again, I'm going to scribble out. You know what, before I do that, I've got this little area here that to me that should be very dark so I'm going to pick up some a lot of this razzleberry and I'm just going to kind of dot it in just to give it a shadow there in the center okay so now I scribble that all out lots of razzleberry in that marker I don't want any transferring to whatever I do next with it. Okay, and now we'll go on to our always artichoke for the stems and the leaves. Oh, and I have no puddle at all. So let me close that back up. Give it a good squeeze. I guess I've never used this before with my blender pens or my aqua painters. So, there we go. And I'm just going to put some color down on those leaves. I'm not going to be real crazy about shading or anything. Add a little color on the stems. The leaves on this actually, you see by the pencil or the um, what would be pen strokes, 
it's uh, kind of got shading done with those. So there's really no need for me to get get too involved on the leaves, I guess. You could say. So just so we have some color on them. And we'll scribble that one out. No more always artichoke in my pen and we're done with the coloring. Now don't be intimidated um, doing this. There's really there's not a whole lot you can do wrong and unless you work the paper too much and then you just it kind of gets kind of messy looking but you could use markers to do this whatever you feel comfortable with if you like to use um, pencils colored pencils then use those and I'm going to attach this right in the center of my piece of basic black here so we're about ready to put our card together we've got all of our components let's put our little tag thing here and yes, I used a piece of scrap paper for that, and I had something printed on the back already. So, no one will ever know if you don't tell them. Okay. Oh, we should probably do the inside stamp also. What did I stamp on the inside? Oh, to someone who makes others so happy and I don't even have that stamp out. Well, you know what? Let's get that stamp out and stamp it. My, uh, my tuxedo black ink hasn't gone too far away. Let's see what I've got here. Grab a block real quick. Put that on there. So many times I don't put anything on the inside, I tend to forget about it. Alright, so we'll just line it up kind of towards the top and stamp. And there we go. I'm one of those people when they stamp, I, I'm one of those rock and rollers where I tend to tip my stamp so I have to be very careful to go straight down and straight up. So let's put that on the inside. Put some snail on the back. And we'll have about a quarter inch border all the way around here. Tombow glue would work equally well, but I don't have it out. So I'm using my snail. And we'll put our polka dot designer paper on the on the front of the card. Went about about an eighth of an inch showing all the way around. You want it centered. And now I'm going to attach these two together. So I'll put some snail in the center of the back here. And I'm just going to offset this a little bit. That just makes it so much more interesting, don't you think? And we'll snail the back of this. Now when we put this on, we want this part to be centered. Okay? Ignore your rich razzleberry and center the, this part. So, let me get that lined up here. We want that mm, 
We want the black border to be about a half inch in on all sides on the designer series paper. So there we go. Looks like I got a little adhesive there. I got this cool thing and it's a, an adhesive remover. Um, Stampin' Up! sells it. It's not very expensive, but it works great. It, it, it takes off if, you, if your Tombow kind of sneaks out on you on the sides. If you let it dry, this picks it up. It's like a miracle. Okay, so I got that done, and I'm ready to attach my happy birthday wishes. And where did my dimensionals get to? There they are. We'll use a couple of dimensionals on the back of that. Give our card a little dimension. You could pop this part up too if you wanted to. But I thought the little tag here was was enough popping on the front of my card. You could add some ribbons to this. You could add some glitter or sparkly gems or pearls or whatever whatever you think it might need but I tend to go with the keep it simple sweetheart method the kiss method and there we go so there's our basically black with a little color, Oop, let me get in the camera, added to it, or without color. I think they're equally pretty. So if you like this video, then be sure to hit that like button down below. If you'd like to see more of my videos, then there's the subscribe button there. That will pop up uh, and when I put a new video up for you down near the right hand side on your YouTube page. If they, you'd like to shop with me for any of the Stampin' Up! materials that I've used today, you can do that either through my Facebook page or my website. I would love to be your demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And as always, I'll have a list of all the materials I use down below. So y'all take care, stay safe, and happy stamping.